Okay, so for everybody that is not familiar with the technique of Brio um, spectroscopy, I just give a brief introduction. In uh, Brio spectroscopy, we uh, focus laser light onto the cornea into a certain volume. Within that volume, the laser interacts with acoustic phonons, inducing a small wavelength shift in a small fraction of the, of the light. And that wavelength shift, which is in the picometer range, is proportional to the speed of sound. Sorry. Which you can see here in this equation. And that speed of sound is linearly related to the um, wavelength shift here in, in uh, frequency shift. However, we know now that the frequency uh, shift is again, uh, that the, the uh, velocity of the speed of sound is again related to the bulk modulus, which represents the biomechanical properties of the, the tissue that you examine. So if we combine now those two equations, we end up here with the quadratic relation of that frequency shift, which we can measure by means of Brion spectroscopy, and we can obtain, therefore, a biomechanical information of the tissue sorry, that we examine. However, currently, from the technical aspect, this is only possible to measure the, perpian, uh, the, the surface perpendicular biomechanical modulus, which is something else that we know from simple stress strain measurement, where we analyze the surface parallel biomechanical modulus. But I'll come back later on to that problem. So what have we done? We had a look at 46 healthy corneas and 36 um, keratoconus patients or corneas with unclear progression status. And in addition, we also examined 34 patients after corneal cross-linking, ranging from two months to 42 months post-operatively. The system that we used um, had a, was working in the near-infrared spectrum. It had a lateral resolution of 5 microns and an actual resolution of 30 microns, ending up per actual scan in roughly 15 to 20 scanning points. In order to create now two-dimensional biomechanical maps, we averaged each axle scan to one point. So to summarize the technique, Brio microscopy or spectroscopy actually is a method to determine the corneal biomechanical properties with a high res spatial resolution in a contactless manner. So that's an example how a regular normal healthy cornea looks like. Um, you can see this is on the picture number A is depicting one actual scan. You can see that this cornea has on average a thickness of 540, so it was from the thickness of normal cornea. And on the right hand side, you can see that two dimensional map with um, roughly 40 actual scans and an interpolation in between each scan. You can see that this is pretty much a homogeneous pattern of the biomechanical properties. If we now have a look at those 46 eyes that we examined, and we analyze this for an age dependency because we know that during aging the cornea gets stiffer and we want to see whether we are um, sensitive enough to detect this age, rela uh, this age relation. We, we found um, a relation with a, with, a, um, coefficient, with a relation coefficient of 0.37 and a two-sided significance of 0.01 indicating a high significance for that age relation. However, this increase in biomechanical or Brion frequency shift is only in the range of 4 megahertz, indicating a 0.1% change of the absolute measurement value per decade. And now if you compare this now to the surface parallel stress strain measurements, which were performed in 2010 by El Sheikh and co-workers, he found per decade, so per 10 years, a 15% increase in corneal stiffness. So you have a difference on, in, of, 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 uh, of uh, two orders of magnitude difference between the longitudinal measurement, the surface perpendicular measurement, what we measure with Brion spectroscopy currently, compared to the surface parallel measurement, which we actually measure um, in Young's modulus or the surface, easy said, the surface perpendicular modulus. So can this help us, this technology at the current stage, to identify the weakest point of a cornea in keratoconus? or here post lasik ectasia? And the answer is yes, it can. And in this, in this specific example, it um, shows nicely that the weakest point represented here in the red or orange area. Oh, so here on the right. So this area here correlates nicely or fits nicely with a point of maximum posterior elevation. 
If we analyze this now in, a, in, in the entire group of those 36 patients, we could clearly see that the Brion, or the Brion frequency shift in the maximum posterior elevation represented on the right hand side here correlates better than the Brion shift in other points, for example, the, in, in the thinnest point, with traditional geometrical values like Kmax, thinnest pachymetry, keratoconus index, or Amsler Comae stage. So what we already obtained from Brion microscopy is that the weakest point of the cornea is there where the protrusion of the posterior surface is maximal. And if you keep in mind, or if you have in mind that on the anterior surface, the epithelium has the possibility to compensate for an ectasia, this also makes sense. So do we have now a new gold standard for keratoconus classification? Unfortunately, I have to disappoint you, because for a single measurement, what you can see here, the range is quite wide and we cannot determine whether a cornea is normal or which stage it is. However, on average, we were able to distinguish Amsler Chromae stage 1 to, no, to normal corneas, respectively to further progress keratoconus cases. If we now have a look at the rece uh, receiving operating characteristic curves and compare the lowest Brion frequency shift to geometrical values like the thinnest pachymetry or Kmax, we can see that currently one measurement of Brion microscopy or Brion frequency shift is not enough and even at the current stage worse than Kmax and thinnest pachymetry to identify keratoconus or early stage keratoconus with a higher sensitivity and specificity. But what we have and uh, what is our hope and what is currently under investigation is that as we obtain not only one value but we obtain entire two-dimensional maps or actually three-dimensional maps of the cornea, we can further compute this and develop new indices comparing the non-ectatic region which is pretty normal to the ectatic region which is pathologic and then out of those data obtain new indices which hopefully can characterize or can identify keratoconus at an early stage. The last finding that I want to show is uh, depicted here in that um, picture. On the left hand side you can see pre-crosslinking uh, pre keratoconus eyes compared to post-crosslinking keratoconus eyes and what we see is a substantial or significant difference of the average of the weakest uh, uh, point of the cornea in, in and if we now compare the post-cross-linking cohort to the normal cohort or to the, to the healthy cohort, we do not observe a difference that is significantly. And another nice finding on the right-hand side is if we analyze now the relation or the correlation between time after cross-linking and um, the Brion frequency shift within the cone, we can see or we can observe a slight stiffening over time. And this slight stiffening might also correlate, this is something we are also investigating now, with continuous flattening that we know from keratoconus, which is depicted here in this case, and it published in 2018 by Noah and, and uh, our group, showing that in some eyes there's a continuous linear flattening of the cornea, which does not show any asymptotic uh, 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 decline. So in summary, we can say about Brion spectroscopy that we are measuring the biomechanical properties of the cornea in contrast to simply describe the geometrical data obtained by OCT, Scheinflug or Placido or other devices. The, advan the advantages are that we do have a high spatial resolution also compared to Corvus where we just obtain one number. And the other big advantage is that it's a non-touch measurement so you do not interact with the patient. The, uh, the next finding is that the posterior float or the, posterior, the maximum of the posterior elevation shows best correlation with the weakest point of the keratoconus cornea. Currently, from the out of technical limitations, we are just, or we are just um, able to detect the surface perpendicular measurements and not the surface parallel measurements, which everybody knows from stress-strain measurements and Young's modulus. And the last thing is that Brion spectroscopy currently with one number that it is provided is not sensitive to enough to either classify keratoconus nor to detect um, early stage keratoconus. 
So we need to develop new biomechanical indices, including corneal pachymetry and possibly geometrical data um, to improve the detection of early stage keratoconus and to identify keratoconus cases that need corneal cross-linking compared to those that are stable and don't need uh, 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 corneal cross-linking. Thank you very much for your attention.